Peter Giorgio is on the hunt for votes in the struggling regional city of Geraldton in Western Australia, where jobs are scarce. Yeah, we've got the guts to say what you're thinking. So, yeah, you know, exactly. We, we know what we listen. We listen to the people. We know exactly what they what they're thinking. And that's... The little-known senator's own job is on the line. So you'd be voting for One Nation, uh, during and that? he's hoping Pauline Hanson's appeal will oh, make right. all the difference. Don't worry about Pauline. Worry about me. You're right. <laughs> well, look, she's a, uh, probably the most recognised politician, you know. So um, either people like her or people don't like her. You know? I've come that close just to shut the doors and walk it away. Campaigning by his side is Ray Allen, who runs a liquid waste business that's barely staying afloat. The former Liberal voter is now a One Nation member and he believes Pauline Hanson understands his problems. Not only has she come from the working class like myself, but she's got the same values as the general Australians and not these silver spooned politicians. What, what do you think? Giorgio is a former tradie who was only elected after he replaced Rod Cullerton when he was disqualified by the High Court. Despite poor polling, he's boldly predicting One Nation could win up to five Senate seats. We're quite confident um, that I'll probably retain my seat, or hopefully. Um, it's, it's going to be a tough tough election, you know, they've got Palmers now and a few other people. And across the board, we're hopefully to get a Senate each in every state. We've often seen One Nation overstate their chances uh, of getting seats. They did that at the state election. Uh, Peter Giorgio is talking a big game now, but I really think that people are on to One Nation and are sick of the chaos that comes with them. Pauline Hanson was in a mood to celebrate after the 2016 federal election. Well done. <laughs> with One Nation landing four Senate seats and a key role on the cross bench. But the joy was short lived. The dual citizenship saga claimed Malcolm Roberts, and bitter infighting led to Fraser Anning and Brian Burston walking away from the party. I think it's just a continuation of what we've always seen from One Nation. Uh, they get elected with a lot of hype, uh, a lot of people put some hope in them, and then the, media, the minute they get elected, they always fall apart. I told Pauline Hanson that if um, we lose senators, this is back in 2016, and uh, it's few that One Nation is imploding for a third time, the electorate will not forgive them. Burston made that implosion worse by defecting to Clive Palmer's United Australia Party, leading to this ugly scuffle with Pauline Hanson's Chief of Staff, James Ashby. Listen here. What are you doing? What are you doing, Chad? I'll call the uh, federal police. What are you doing? He claims the United Australia Party is winning the battle for disgruntled voters and Clive Palmer should beat Malcolm Roberts for a Queensland Senate seat. They're in a downward spiral, without doubt our polling shows them at least half, 50% of what we're polling and I don't think they're going to win any seats at all. Good morning, how are you? They're suggesting Malcolm Roberts may win back his seat in Queensland but I don't think he'll get near it. Do you think that Clive Palmer or any of his candidates are going to give you accountability and try and deal with the bastards in there that are really screwing the Australian people over? One Nation appears worried. Please think carefully when you cast your vote. Pauline Hanson is right to be worried about Clive Palmer because Clive Palmer has a huge profile, an immense amount of money. I mean, the war chest that he has for this election campaign is extraordinary. Party co-founder David Oldfield has been watching One Nation's response to the Palmer threat from a distance. He believes Malcolm Roberts could win a Senate seat, but that's about it. I expect they have a, uh, a reasonable chance of another Senate seat in Queensland, but that'd be it. If they, if they managed a lower house seat in Western Queensland, they would have to think that's the stuff of miracles, really. This terrorist manifesto almost reads like One Nation, immigration and Muslim policy. Do you in uh, any way feel hold complicit hold on. Hold on. with this atrocity? You... Following the Christchurch massacre, One Nation was accused of normalising hate speech towards Muslims. That is a load of rubbish, in your, David. In your, mate, 
One Nation is still dealing with the fallout from a three-year sting operation by Al Jazeera's investigative unit, which featured undercover footage of senior party officials visiting Washington DC and seeking donations from the American gun lobby. Mate, if they threw $10 million at us, mm. we can win a heap of seats, plush a bunch of seats in the Senate, mate. This was about sourcing technology, sourcing an understanding of how they operate, but never was it about seeking $20 million from the NRA. Steve Dixon resigned as a Senate candidate last week after footage was broadcast showing Dixon in a US strip club using crude and demeaning language about women. Steve's language and behaviour was unacceptable. Horrified. You know, I've, I've personally been married for 52 years, so I've learned to actually respect women and what they do. Um, most of it's been pretty easy, actually. Mm. Malcolm Thompson runs a community organisation yeah, yeah, helping people yeah, who are experiencing yeah, poverty in Caboolture, north of Brisbane, in the marginal seat of Longman. I'm a swinging voter. I would, I would never go back and vote for Pauline Hanson. Where Malcolm lives, One Nation polls in double figures and has previously had his vote. But now he's disillusioned with the chaos he sees in Hanson's ranks. It's a lack of interest in her platform at this point, uh, and especially being based on the fact that she doesn't seem to be able to get candidates um, out there uh, that have been properly screened. Yeah, yeah. And when you see people like Clive Palmer and Pauline Hanson rattling around, what does that sort of mean to you in terms of stable government and that kind of thing? It's not. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Basically, yeah, right. it's not. Labor is stoking voters' fears that one nation could win control of the Senate. In the state election, that strategy helped it win key marginal seats across southeast Queensland. Oh, a drama and yeah. Yeah, no. it just never ends, doesn't no. it? No. While Scott Morrison has said the Liberals will preference One Nation below Labor, the Nationals aren't doing that in regional Queensland. Labor is seizing on that division, pointing out that the LNP is a merged party in the Sunshine State. I think the very big problem for the LNP in doing preference deals with One Nation is in, in regional Queensland, all that does is show people that a vote for One Nation is a vote for the LNP, and in South East Queensland it shows soft Liberal voters that a vote for the LNP is a vote for One Nation. It doesn't work for them in any part of the state, and it seems that they're going to have to learn that lesson again. What the Nationals Party has decided, the Nationals candidates here in Queensland, is that the policies of the Labor and Greens parties would be much, much worse. The Labor Party and the Greens parties uh, want to team up to shut down coal mines and take away our jobs. Peter Giorgio is hoping One Nation's recent turmoil won't cost his party dearly on polling day. There probably has been a bit of damage to the brand, but look, our supporters are behind us 100% and and that's who that's all that matters to us